Hey everybody, Michael Snyder here, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is March 3rd, and today we're going to take a look at this week's system moving into the area associated with this trough over the entire Pacific Northwest, diving all the way down into California. You can see light precipitation mostly around the region here for the Central Sound in eastern Washington, and you see some convective showers here with kind of a small little low pressure system. We'll look at that in some detail too on the satellite imagery, but you can see that precip all the way down into California there. Take a look around the rest of the country too to see what else is going on. Then we're going to take a look into next week and we'll take a look into our extended forecast as well for the Pacific Northwest. Here I'm showing the temperatures on the map to highlight the fact that the warm air has made its way all the way into eastern Washington and Oregon. And really all this precipitation should be mostly rain, save for maybe some of the higher elevations of the Idaho Panhandle and western Montana, maybe a little bit in the Cascades at the very higher elevations. I think Snoqualmie had some snow last hour. But for the most part in the lowlands, it should be rain. As you can see, 40s uh, tend to be the rule here for most of the Pacific Northwest. And checking out the infrared satellite imagery here, you can see this little mesoscale low moving down onto our coastline here this morning. There's an outside chance for a lightning strike somewhere here in western Washington, western Oregon, and even in eastern Washington this evening as this system kind of eventually moves through. You can see this cold air that's moving down off the Pacific Ocean here off the West Coast. And this system here is going to bring some thunderstorm potential all the way down to Southern California and some rainfall all the way in through Nevada, some snow for the Sierras there. So you can see the mountain wave activity kind of picking up over the Sierras as this system moves through there. Might be some nice images coming out there if you can find them on social media there. And you can see the cloud shield from this remnant atmospheric river that we had here. Nice Kona low out here north of Hawaii. So we're going to take a deeper look into what's coming next week. There's going to be some Arctic air kind of sliding down and just make an attempt to get into central BC and even try to get out into Washington and Oregon a little bit on into next week. It doesn't look like it has a great trajectory. It doesn't look like it's going to get that close enough to really impact us too much, but it could bring an interesting system that brings some convergent zone potential for Puget Sound and maybe some snow for the higher elevations. So that's what we'll be looking at here in a bit. Here's what's going on a little bit closer today. You can see this mesoscale low kind of sliding down the coastline. It's got precipitation with it, and there are some sun breaks across the region here. So we could destabilize just enough to get a lightning strike somewhere here. I would think mainly Willamette Valley north and then on into eastern Washington, especially the higher terrain. We'll look at some of those details also. And here's another one here. This is kind of the visible satellite imagery of this low pressure moving in. You can see the sun breaks. You know, you get that sun, warms things up, destabilizes the atmosphere a little bit. We might get a lightning strike out of some of these convective showers. As you can see, this kind of remnant uh, convergence just hanging over the Puget Sound, kind of giving us a gloomy morning here as these clouds are hanging out. It's going to take a while for this to get out. We're probably going to be dealing with it tomorrow, too, as finally we get some clearing as this gets pushed out from the north. But checking out the rest of the country here, too, you can see much of Montana is under winter weather advisory. Same with the thing with the Sierras for uh, California, down into southern Oregon even, as the system continues to bring moisture up through this region here. And then some Arctic air is eventually going to slide down through Montana. Very high confidence for that. How far west will that Arctic air extend? That is another question altogether. And going on to the rest of the country, this is for Saturday and then on into Sunday. Some severe weather potentials across Iowa and some of the southeast, mainly Arkansas. So if you have interest out there, heads up for that severe weather potential this weekend. Here's the landslide index. Um, we're we're going to be rapidly dropping back down below this red line, but there still is that elevated risk for areas, especially Seattle southwards towards Tacoma. So here's a current special weather statement by the Seattle National Weather Service. Um, this mentions the landslide potential, it mentions the heavy rain that we got also, and it talks about some landslides that have occurred through King and Pierce counties, but it does mention in this alert too that this will be the final landslide alert for this event as this rain starts to taper off as we get into tomorrow, Friday and Saturday. So this is for increasing chances, much colder and widespread snow. This is that Arctic air that's going to be moving down mainly east of the Rockies, and this is for March 9th through 12th. This is the Missoula National Weather Service talking about this. Taking a brief look at California here as a storm system moves into the area, a fairly powerful storm system at that. It's going to bring some thunderstorms all the way down to Southern California and even some snow at the higher elevations all the way down into Southern California. And this is going to extend all the way up into the Sierras, Central Sierras, getting some good snowfall amounts up towards a foot. So heads up if you have concerns down there in California. I know I have some viewers down there. 
And back to the Pacific Northwest, we have considerable avalanche danger for the North Cascades. It's been downgraded to moderate here for the Cascades as the snowpack finally adjusts to all that precipitation we got the last few days. But there still is danger out there, so this is a great website to be familiar with if you're off in the backcountry, the Northwest Avalanche Center. They have good forecasts like this, so if you're going in a certain region, you can check out the timeline and check out what the snow level is. A lot of great information here. So here we're taking a look at the drought monitor released today, Thursday, March 3rd. And this isn't to alarm anybody. Drought is a natural process for western portions of the United States. Just kind of highlighting what areas are having more difficult time versus others. And you can see there still is exceptional drought for eastern slopes of the Cascades of Oregon. Exceptional drought has been removed from eastern Washington. There still exists some exceptional drought from Montana. And we are in a La Nina year, so there is hope that we're going to remain cooler and a little bit wetter than normal through portions of the northwest here. So hopefully that'll help bust some of this drought as we go on into spring and prepare for summer. Checking out current weather conditions across Pacific Northwest into this afternoon. This is that convective available potential energy building across western Washington, northern Oregon, and on into eastern Washington. There could be an isolated lightning strike with this instability building this afternoon. So here we're looking at the composite reflectivity. This is what the radar may look like this afternoon according to the HER 3KM high resolution model. You see that residual precipitation ongoing eastern Washington to the Idaho panhandle here and you see these convective showers bubbling up with that upper level lows that moves through western Washington and northern Oregon. And you can see there's some moderate showers going on through there. Just that isolated chance of a lightning strike and you can see some convective activity going on maybe through northeast Washington there later on this afternoon and evening. And then you see the showers generally wane as we get into tonight as this stuff starts to push off to the east. And checking out the NAM 3KM here, here's what's going on now. You'll see that precipitation going on across the sound this morning. And it's not really picking up the upper level too well. It does show it a little bit here and maybe highlighting some precipitation generally south of Tacoma there as this system slides off to the east, bringing snow to the higher terrain. And we're still going to be under the troughing on into tomorrow, especially for Oregon, as you see, still getting some snow for the Cascades there as this dives down through the region as some residual showers through the Willamette Valley and the coastal range as well going on into Friday night and even a Saturday morning for portions of eastern Oregon still might be getting some snowfall at that point. And then we start to dry out a bit on into Saturday afternoon as the system finally gets out of here Saturday night and it's down over the Intermountain West bringing Nevada some good snowfall. So here we're looking at the European model. This is comparing this morning's 4 a.m. run versus last night's 4 p.m. run. Usually it takes about six hours for the European to organize its data and for this information to become available to us at so about 10 a.m. and about 10 p.m. But here we're able to uh, compare both of them and you can see the troughing over the Pacific Northwest and the storm system about ready to move into California here as the next system develops off our coast mainly misses western Washington affects Oregon and it's going to bring some snowfall to the Cascades some rain to Willamette Valley and some snow to eastern portions of Oregon as this helps dig a very sharp trough over the southwest bringing them some very active weather as the ridge builds over the Pacific Northwest going to protect us for several days from any storm systems into the area and as we go on into early next week, this is Tuesday at this point. Here's Tuesday afternoon. You can see on the backside of this ridge, this troughing is opening up and trying to include the Pacific Northwest again here. And the trend this morning appears to have been a little bit further west, which means more of an active storm potentially for the Pacific Northwest. Um, we'll look into a little more detail on that. But as we go into the future again, that doesn't hang out long. Moves out of the region pretty quickly as the ridge rebuilds. And then you'll notice a troughing opening up over the Gulf of Alaska here as we might return to a more zonal flow in the extended. But that's getting pretty far out there. We have a lot of time to look at that. Now here's the temperature at 5,000 feet. This kind of shows you the system moving into California here, that chilly air aloft, and then the one going to be affecting Oregon on through Saturday, and then diving all the way down the West Coast as we go on into Sunday. And then you'll see the Arctic air try to get over into British Columbia here. You can see it pushing its way south through Canada. It gets out over into central BC. How much of that is going to infiltrate over the Pacific Ocean and cause some cyclogenesis, and what kind of storm will it develop? And how long will it hang out? As you can see, most of it moves east of the Rockies. It's some really cold air. It looks like to intrude all the way down into, all the way out to the Gulf states, actually, on into next weekend. And 
then as we go on into the, the future, you can see some cold air spilled out over the Gulf of Alaska. This may help develop some systems out here and bring us back to our zonal flow that I talked about a minute ago. Looking at the winds aloft here too, you can see the troughing generally along the west coast here. Here goes California system. There's that Oregon system that helps dig this trough out over the southwest as our ridge builds over the Pacific Northwest. And then you'll notice that trough tries to get out over us here as we go on into the extended a bit here. And just how far west will this trajectory get will depend on what kind of weather we can expect here at the surface. But you can see that system doesn't hang out long as the ridge rebuilds in its wake. So here I'm taking an early sneak peek at next week's system here on the morning European run. You can see that precipitation start to impact the region there during the day Tuesday. Some pretty good mountain snows would be going on as the Arctic air starts to make its way into British Columbia. Again, this is next Tuesday afternoon. Perhaps the convergence zone is starting to set up on Tuesday evening. And as we go into Wednesday morning here, you'll see some pretty good convergence zone activity, bringing some really heavy snowfalls to the Cascades. As the snow starts to make its way into the Oregon Cascades as well here too, Wednesday morning. And some really good snowfall totals here for the Rockies of Idaho, Montana, upper elevations of eastern Oregon and Washington, as well as this Arctic air sagging down south. But it is going to be short-lived as this precipitation is going to get out of here and it's going to be fully gone by Thursday morning, as you can see. There's going to be a sharp wind shift moving down the sound. And there's always some kind of interesting weather you can get out of a system like that. You can get some convective activity, especially through the Puget Sound Convergence Zone or really anywhere with a sharp wind shift moving through like that. But again, that system would be short-lived as the ridge rebuilds and then perhaps change to a more zonal flow off of the Pacific Ocean in the future. Let's take a look what the GFS has to say about this trough coming up. You can see it agrees that storm system California, then Oregon, as it builds out that sharp trough over the southwest, the ridge rebuilds across the Pacific Northwest as troughing tries to get going on the back side of this. GFS is in agreement generally with the European, but it's not a great trajectory for a really powerful storm system and then you see the ridge rebuilds for a day or two and then a decent agreement on that gulf of alaska troughing to set up again and maybe some more zonal flow and some systems on into the extended there on the gfs so let's take a look at the canadian model here too this is this morning's run hot off the press as well good agreement with those systems digging that trough over the southwest and the ridge giving us some nice weather for a few days over the Pacific Northwest here. Then it also shows this system and the Canadians pretty aggressive with this polar lobes extending out our way. So this, you know, this is a little bit different than the GFS and the European. It's a little bit further west and a little bit stronger. Because then it shows the general troughing, you know, good agreement between the models and that troughing extending over the Gulf of Alaska. And this almost looks like another atmospheric river signal there on the Canadian, but this is way out there. We don't have to worry about that yet. We have several days to look at that information. So just wanted to finish up here with, this is the national blend of models, high, low temperature. You can see Portland generally in the fifties, not much of a signal for any kind of Arctic air getting in there. And this is for Seattle. You can see the cool down coming on in through next week, but no very cold temperatures, no lowland snow threat as of yet. And this is for Pendleton. You can see it gets a little bit chilly as you go on into later next week, but no major Arctic outbreak at this time expected as some of these days are going to get pretty warm, especially Monday and Tuesday. Look at that. So as we go into Spokane, you can see some of that chilly air affecting eastern Washington through mid next week. And again, we'll watch that over the next couple of days and see how this evolves. Helena, Montana, you can see the further you go east and you get east of the Rockies there a little bit. And you can see some of that really cold air affecting areas of Montana on into the future. So we'll go over this again tomorrow and we'll compare some of the model runs again and see what we can expect on into our extended of course as we get further in you know closer to the event we're going to get a better idea of what's coming so hope you guys are having a good day and if you guys have any comments leave them you know any feedback leave them in the comments and make sure to click like and subscribe if you haven't already and i'll talk to you guys tomorrow